Hi everybody, I'm Carolina Risotto and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a special participation by my sister, Laura Risotto, who's also a fantastic singer-songwriter. Thanks so much for joining, Laura! Hi, hey, hey guys, hey everyone. We've been waiting to do this video for so long. Um, both me and Carolina have received like many requests asking us to do a video together and it's the end of 2019, it's the time. This is when you do this, right? It is now or never. Yeah. Because I ain't gonna live forever. Okay. Together, we thought we would start a new little tradition, right? Where we talk about the things we learned so far in our 20s being the end of the year. So here are five things we've learned so far in our 20s, hashtag 2019 edition. Well, the first thing that we've been talking a lot about lately is just finding our purpose, right? So. It's kind of like weird because when you enter your 20s, you realize that you need to figure out your own direction for yourself, like who you are, why you're here, what are you doing? When I moved to LA, things were like so unstable and I was just trying to survive and find my way around yeah. that I lost sense of purpose. When I started creating again and I realized that that's what was missing in my life and that it was part of my purpose, that's when I started finding my joy again. It's sort of a weird process. I think like if without purpose, life feels really pointless. We find things that we enjoy, but I think when we feel actually complete is when we see the bigger purpose we have on earth. And like for some people, that's their career. For some people, it's their family. Our 20s are kind of what this is for, just reflecting on what it is that makes us feel like this is why I'm here and just pursuing that fully. But as you were saying, I think sometimes we just get so busy and we have to you know, make money. And often we just get so busy about getting stuff done that we forget why we started. Even when thinking of like what the next steps are, what are our next projects, like why did I start this? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Because then you, you kind of just lose direction, you know, and when you're kind yeah. of like, why am I here? What, why am I even doing this? Yeah. That's when you realize, wait, what, why did I come here again? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Reconnect with that. Especially when you move to LA, and this is something that's happened to a few friends of ours recently, mm. people who are living here, who are frustrated because they're creators and they're not creating, or they want to be singers or models or actors, but they're not doing any of those things. If you're in LA, if you're not pursuing your passion yeah. or whatever reason that made you come here, which is probably entertainment or technology, yeah. then why are you here? Exactly. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> this city is weird and it's, it's a lot tough but it's more than just like oh i want to work and be successful it's just like i have a purpose as a creator that i want to fulfill even if you don't know your purpose right now and honestly it's a lifelong journey it's yeah exactly yeah. it's always going to be changing and shifting as you're exposed to new and different things rather than be like oh my god i must find my purpose <laughs> to be happy it's more like what do i want to do that will bring me joy professionally or family wise whatever it is because again we're career focused people so we're going to be talking a lot about careers yeah um but what brings me joy like why am i here what am i doing and then maybe just start with a list of goals of things you would like to achieve mm -hmm. in like the next month or the next two months or maybe try new things that you haven't tried before to see how you feel if you don't put yourself out there then you're really not gonna find what you need. It's your responsibility to find a direction, I feel. I, I think I've been very lucky with the sense that I've always known what I wanted to do for my career. Music has just always been in. But a few years back when I moved to New York, actually, is when I realized that I was like, no, but my purpose in this is actually to bring light. There's a reason why when I'm on stage, I feel that exchange of energy and I crave that because I it's not just what I'm receiving, I love what I'm giving to the audience and I love how people react to my music and that's where I'm telling people stories because sometimes they feel like they can tell it, so I'm telling it for them so they can relate. And that just guides everything mm -hmm. I do. I have that purpose, but how I achieve it keeps changing with how I keep changing with life. Yeah. So it's a constant process. You just like seeking it is very important. But before going to bed, I, I do this actually as a ritual. I always imagine like myself in the ideal performance of my dreams, what I'm gonna be wearing, what I'll be dancing, what kind of music I'll be singing to, what my stage will look like, yeah. and just it, the people I wanna collaborate with. And if you keep that mental vision as well, that also helps guide your actions and inspire you to keep going to fulfill what your purpose is. Even though like it's important to follow your purpose, uh, we always talk about how you must not overwork yourself or put too much pressure, otherwise you become burned out. Something that happens to me a lot. I've just thrown myself into work completely and then I end up working 12 to 15 hour days 
and I don't really know how to take care of myself. So all these things, they just make you feel really burned out. Yeah. When you stop working, your brain stops functioning and you're unable to do anything but be a potato. I think my last time was like three or four weeks ago. Yeah, I had just finished a really intense release of the augmented reality app yeah that we did together yeah i remember i crashed for three days and then all these like monsters and things that i was like just repressing inside of me came out and i was like what the hell where was this coming from and then you lose like three days that you could be relaxing because you're burned out so you gotta find a happy balance i mean on saturday don't take it as serious as seriously as as you would take on a normal weekdays and like to me sundays are supposed to be the religious days it's yeah like, just don't religious as in like no one touches this day don't schedule anything with me unless like Sometimes you gotta do it, but I try to have one day where it's just like, I can't, nobody can rely on me for anything. My mental health comes first, and physical health comes first no matter what. Yeah. Of course, if there are moments again that you push yourself, like when I did your revision, I was sleeping very little, and you're just on that high because it's one thing after the other, yeah. and that's fine as a stage, but just when you think about your routine and how you're carrying yourself and your mentality, mental health first because if this isn't there then nothing else is worth it i've always been doing creative things but taking ownership of a youtube channel and acting more as a video producer here in la has definitely changed things for me this year i noticed that for me to be effectively creative you need to be happy i need to be happy i need to be <laughs> relaxed and i was like what the hell because i have yeah. all these video ideas on my phone but new ideas just weren't flowing. And yeah. I was like, but where are they? Where'd they go? Yeah. And I was like, well, of course, I'm miserable because I work all the time. But I just felt like this is what I must do. I must be working all yeah. the time. But that's the thing, working is not fulfilling your purpose. It needs to be working with a certain direction. And I don't think anyone can fulfill their purpose if they don't feel joy with what yeah, they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. It's a huge lesson this year as Yeah, well. I just thought that if I followed my career, I would be happy. I was like, hell no. I need also people who bring me joy. Yeah, you need um, like friends, you need, you need friends. relationships, you need, Affection. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> we just need other things other than success at work in order to be happy and in order to again fulfill our purpose. Our work is just a way for us to fulfill our purpose. It's yeah. just the direction for it. I think this is a perfect hook for our next topic, which is friendships and loyalty. Which go together. Yeah. I wish it was already implicit, but apparently it is not around here. It's not implied. <laughs> it's not implied. <laughs> Expect little because that's what you're gonna get. So I'm gonna try to give you the uplifting side. Carolina's gonna tell you all the bad things that happened this year so we can balance each other out here, Yay. okay? Um, because, I, I mean, this is not my first time living here, so I think that that helped. Um, and also, I was lucky enough that I moved here and a lot of my best friends from college were here this time. Hmm. So the first time, I had a rough time. This second time has been easier in that sense. But I think we learned that with friendships, when they need to happen naturally, and there are different categories of friends, right? They're the friends that you call, that you know that when shit's going down, they're gonna be there for you no matter what. Those are the 1%. Yeah, I mean, people need to kind of earn being a part of your personal space and and even though we want to be welcoming and just open up ourselves we also need to be protective yeah. of our intimacy i mean i learned from oprah and dr phil this week <laughs> uh, this <is> our sources <laughs> <laughs> that you should only give as much as you're willing to lose one of the things about me is that i'm loyal uh, when I have friends, I want to be there for them. I'm a support system. I like doing that. I like bringing people joy. It's one of the reasons I also create YouTube because I want to be a source for my audience on things that they can do, uh, show them like, you should be brave. You can achieve whatever you want. Yeah. I always want to help and give back. Yeah. But it has happened to me more than once where um, be I was so nice that people took it for granted. You know, loyalty is something that's earned. And I've also learned through Oprah and Dr. Phil and Laura, that oh my you're- god, I'm on that <laughs> list. Yes, that as you make these mistakes, at least you gain tuition, right? So your intuition becomes stronger and you're able to detect um, the energy and people's behavior. Yeah, I mean, when they say tuition, I think they also just mean like you get an education from it. Like you are paying yeah. with the experiences you're having to just learn how to detect these things earlier on. You need to learn. You need to take responsibility. Yeah, You of know, course. with all these experiences, I was like, why? Because this happened a couple times this year, and I was like, why does this keep happening to me? 
And I was like, well, what part do I play in what's, this? Yeah, what's my responsibility in this? Because yeah. I do have responsibility for these things to be happening to me. Like, no, I let it happen. So how can I stop it from happening again? And of course, is it so easy to point fingers and say, oh, you suck, you need to change this. But like, you shouldn't expect other people to change. Though some people do suck. No, some people do suck. You should not expect no, them but, to change. No, but you also <laughs> allowed yourself yeah. to be around people. So sometimes you don't know and it happens. But as soon as you realize it, if you keep that person around, whatever consequences of that is also your responsibility. So yeah. it's about being able to identify that and a way to not get hurt through that. It's just like letting people in slowly, letting them earn yeah. their space. When it comes to loyalty, for example, we were talking about this, like the only reference we have to someone's behavior is what they have done in the past. So we can't expect someone to be loyal if they haven't acted loyal yet. In the end, I'd rather just be on my own than to be with a bunch of people who don't really matter. Uh, but this brings us to another topic, um, another lesson from this year which is um, to trust yourself, right? Because as you go through these things and you're meeting people or you're getting new jobs or whatever it is, remember to trust your intuition and your gut feeling. It's so easy to just like get lost in everyone's opinions and, and then forget to listen to your own opinion. You don't need that many opinions to make a decision. Yeah, yeah, no, you no. don't. I no. think gathering information is important, but um, feedback is important and you should be open to a constructive criticism. Yeah. And that's, I think, one of the biggest and most empowering lessons I've learned this year. Nobody knows what's best for me more than I do. Yeah. Nobody. It doesn't matter if they're my family or if they're, I don't know, in the top tier of the industry, they don't know. The only person who has those answers, and I'm not just saying just what's best for my career, what's best for me as a human in general. And the person who will have to deal with the consequences of your decisions is you. Is you. So you might as well own it and just trust your gut feeling, be in touch with that is definitely a practice, but trusting that is a different subject. So I think this year I just learned to trust my ideas, to go for my ideas. And even when I've had controversy from different aspects of life, just be like, no, I know this is what I want. I know this is what I need. I'm gonna go for it. Doesn't matter what other people say. That's also something that happened to me a lot when I moved here is since I was just so overwhelmed by all the changes in my life. Cause I went moved here. I didn't have a place to live. I didn't have a car nor a driver's license, um, nothing. So when I was so distracted by all the things that were moving and changing, and trying to fix all those things so it would reach a stable moment in my life, which took about a year, um, that I completely lost touch with my intuition. And sometimes it's the feeling and the emotion and the energy that's gonna guide you. Yeah. So I noticed that I haven't really been in touch with that. So I'm still working on it. And all success people I've seen online and heard from say meditation is essential for that. Oh, I need so to get to that. Yeah. I'm trying to start meditating again. Um, so if you guys actually have any techniques or tips for that, it would be great. <laughs> Let us know in the comments um, yeah. what you do to be connected with your intuition. Just be aware that you might get lost sometimes and having identity crisis are fine. If you're not aware of what's happening to you, you won't be able to fix it. And you need to take time to stop and process it to actually understand. So it's all connected like don't do, if you're burning out you have to stop and reflect on what you're doing how are you carrying yourself yeah. our consciousness i think it's just so much smarter than we give it credit give it credit for you know what i mean like yeah. it knows it captures these things we just need to be able to read it and then use it to our advantage to save us time and pain <laughs> yeah but don't you know. definitely don't ignore it especially because your gut feelings is there to protect you from yeah harm. You to know, guide. to guide you. Actually, yes. Oprah also talks about this. Of course she does. Guys, I've been listening to Oprah all the time. <laughs> Super Soul Conversations. Super soul yeah. Just go there. But she talks about that, how especially people ignore their gut feeling or feelings of danger because they want to be polite. Oh, yeah. What? No. 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 <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> so in, in general, trust yourself when it comes to a positive feeling that you're <laughs> sure of something. And when it's a negative feeling or a dangerous feeling. Yeah, you'll be able <laughs> yeah. to feel the contrast. Yeah. Um, and from that, we go to be open. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our final lesson of 2019. Just don't be attached to a specific path just because it's what you plan for yourself. Yeah. I feel like personally, I've become so attached to the idea of staying in the United States because it's something I've always wanted to do. But what I really wanted to do was to live in New York City. And I was there. And then I was suddenly put in LA because God damn it, the work opportunity was so good that I couldn't say no. Yeah. I really struggled with that because for a long time I was like, but I want to be in New York, but I want to be in New York. I was like, but you're in LA, like just release yourself, let it be. Um, but at the same time, I noticed that I don't want to be too attached to the idea of staying in the United States just because 
that's what I had planned for the past 10 years of my life, you know? Yeah. I want to be more open and just let things happen rather than trying to control them. So yeah. that's something I'm currently working on, but I feel like it's important. Yeah, I think it's important for you to not to stay stuck on a version of yourself yeah. that you visualize because we evolve, we change, and we should be able to embrace our new realities. And we're not able to do that if we're just like, no, but this is what I have planned. Because sometimes, you know, the universe has a better plan for you than you have for yourself. So just like, I think it's just being open to accepting the opportunities that show up to you and adapting to them because you, you never know, it might make you happier than you thought. Especially, I think when you've risked so much and there's so many sacrifices for you to get here and for you to do this, that it's really hard to accept when things go in a different direction. Not worse or better, but in a different direction than you imagine, you know? Honestly, the best things that happened in my career were absolutely random because I was open to trying something new. Yeah. If an opportunity to make a big leap comes by and you're scared, don't necessarily stop yourself from doing it just because you're afraid. Give small little tries of different little things so you're always open to different opportunities is what i feel just because you make a decision doesn't mean you can't take it back yeah you know so if you move if you move to a city and you hate it you can leave you know nothing's stopping you so yeah just remember that's why you need to remember why am i doing this what is my purpose what is my direction yeah if that guides you you should be able to make the right decision but just like accept your reality embrace it and just try to make the best of it it's all we can do yeah, and also sometimes if you want to gain perspective, I always feel like it's good for you to put yourself outside of the situation. Yeah. So, for example, uh, if you hate the place where you're living, yeah. leave town for a little while. Yeah. Do a few days a week. True. Come back. You will feel the contrast. But yeah. I think 2019 was that year where, you know, they really took me and they're like, squeeze How out. far can we go? Squeeze yeah. Out everything yeah, from there. Sure. It came to a phase where I was feeling pain every single day. Yeah. I still feel pain. It's, what it is. it's part of growth. But it, at least I feel more like, hey, I've learned. I'm more clear-minded. I feel like I am, I've got more ownership of myself and my own decisions. Yeah. I know better how to protect myself, my friends. And that's empowering. Yeah. I know how to use my time better. And all these things are important. And um, accepting things for the way they are, too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's been... I think 2019, <laughs> 2019, I think, again, because I've had years, to me, the worst years were the years that I didn't have control of my mental health, that I just didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And now I am very aware of all of that and I know how to take care of it and how to prioritize it and cope with it. I'm still learning about my own mental health because since I've just dive into work, I just try to ignore my feelings and repress that. How's that a good idea? Nope, that doesn't help you. That comes back and it comes yeah. back worse. So you need to be like aware and let feelings just happen and even though it's painful. So to me, that's 2019. I've had like really bad things happen like relationship wise and we've also, I mean, I was hit by a car this year. We had to move out of an apartment very last minute. Oof. Um, oh my you know, God, that was this year. That was this year. This oh, year has just been, okay, this is a year we of like so a, much change. Yeah, we were in a terrible living situation. Yeah, we started That was year this like year. That. We started the year, this is how we started 2019. That's crazy. New Year's. Oh my God. You know, that's how we started. That's how, I knew, to me, I have a thing. I have a thing. Carolina knows it. Every turn of the year, I have a strong gut feeling about what the year will be. Oh, no. And I had exactly the right gut feeling about this one. We started the new year with what? An email at 11.30 p.m. from our building manager saying that our Christmas lights we put in the balcony of our building were compromising the uniformity, the uniformity of the building. Oh. And turn, telling us to turn down the music. I'm like, it's New Year's. We were playing Twister. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> this is a story time for a different video. But, to but me, that's the perfect metaphor. Think of, we started the year with that apartment, with other friendships, and now we were able to just get rid of all those negative things. It's the year of filtering. It was the year of filtering. But for the, you have to encounter what the bad seeds are in order to filter, <sighs> to filter them so out. Glad, yeah. yeah, but just think of like, we <laughs> did all the work in 2019, so now we get to enjoy 2020. <laughs> it's the year of ups and downs, but I think also the best advice I've received from my mom ever, that your life becomes the narrative you choose. Mm -hmm. So you can look at this as just like, Oh, this year sucks. This was horrible. And I mean, horrible things did happen. I don't think there's anything more traumatic that I've ever been through than being hit by a car. And if you choose to look at it as a positive or just like as a change, then that changes everything. I think it was a super valuable year. Super. I think things happened the way they had to. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> um, 
I hope that you guys learned something from this video. Some things, because we things. talked a lot. So, yeah. But if you've learned only one thing, well, good for you. Tough. I really hope that you guys got something positive out of this video. We definitely want to know what you guys have been learning. If you're yeah. in your 20s or in your teens, whatever it is, your 30s, every type of knowledge is valuable. It's just, we're going through our 20s and it's a very transformational phase. I am sure that when we record this video next year, we will have changed our mind by about some things that we discussed here. Yeah. Because we're always changing. Because there's just so much in the world that you're exposed to. Um, so let that influence you. Let that guide you and impact you. So anyway, follow Carolina no, as well on her social Laura, media. No. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Self like we should this self promo or a sister promo. No, but seriously, Laura is a fantastic artist. She's a singer. She's a songwriter. She does a little bit of everything. She also has a YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, so you should follow her there. All the information is below. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you like longer videos, let me know. If you like yeah. something shorter as well. This is like still an exploration phase, so I want yeah. to hear from you guys what you like. Feel free to share if you have any stories of your own that you want to share in the comments or anything about like techniques that you use in order to handle burnout, for example. Like whatever knowledge you have to share about the topics, topics we discussed, please share it with us. Because yeah. we need it, our whole community needs it, so this is what this is about, right? Us sharing our ideas, what we've learned, and you sharing it back. I think let's finish up the video with a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. Yes, a badass 2020. Yep. And Let it be your year full of life, full of growth and glow. Glow, bitch. Just glow, bitch. I'm Carolina Risotto. I'm Laura Risotto. We'll see you next time. Bye.